Multiple streams of income will not get you rich. It's not the fastest way. When to quit is when you stop loving it. And I think people just need to taste more. You need to try more. I love that they're cheating and I'm not. Now we're up to Indianapolis. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go! What do you got? When you first started on YouTube and on video, was it a passion or was it something like, uh, I know I, it, it was a strategy at the beginning and became a passion or was it passion from the beginning? So here's the thing, I think the acid test should be, do I wanna do it again? So don't go into a relationship trying to get married on the first date. <laughs> might be a mistake. Maybe it works for some people, but for most, it might be a mistake. The acid test is, do I wanna go back for a second date? So when I first did video, I sucked, right? Brutal. Go watch it. The whole history is there. I used to have to have my sister come in, uh, focus, press record, leave the room, because I couldn't do it with her in the room. I couldn't speak with her in the room, right? I've, I've had to fight the judgment issues myself along the way, right? So these strategies I've used on myself to get more comfortable. But I, I, didn't, I didn't love video and know that, like, that I had to do this thing for the rest of my life. I went and I said, this, this is cool. Yeah, I like this. I want to do it again. That was fun. I mean, it totally sucked, but that's okay. I can probably make it better the next time. And use that as your acid test. And I think people just need to taste more. You need to try more. That's why action is so important. You get an idea for YouTube, go make a YouTube video. Oh, I only have audio. Who cares? Like, put up a picture and do it and see if you liked it, right? It's like people who say that, how do you know if you like sushi or not? You're not going to think your way through it. You might say, oh, well, rice, I don't know, and raw fish sounds nasty, and okay, but just go try it and see. We're thinking too much. So you try it and see, and then you see, did I like it? Oh, I kind of like that sushi place. Okay, I'll go back, I'll do that again. And then sushi becomes your favorite food. Right, so you say yes to everything, and then just see if you want to go back and do it again. Um, I'm all about patience and following passion and things like that, but mm -hmm. at what point is, um, you know, for a business, cash flow is the oxygen. At mm -hmm. what time is it like that you're like, I've been patient enough, and at this point it's got to be delusion that my company is making no money or not enough money to sustain sure. itself, it might be time to move on. I think you need to flip patience and impatience for most people. I think you need to have patience for the results, but be impatient with yourself. Like, today has to matter. Like, whatever's on your list, are you proud of your work today and accomplishing those things? And if not, then tomorrow make it double. Like, make it count. Today has to, like, massive impatience for the effort you're putting in daily, but then having patience with the results. When to quit is when you stop loving it. And that may mean you have to go get a job for a period of time just to make cash flow happen. But you're still doing your thing because you can't breathe without it, right? Like his singing may not take off to make him money yet. So he has to go work at UPS for the next three years. But like, no. I, say, I say that I say that because Danny, Danny came from UPS and he hates it. <laughs> um, but don't, don't stop singing. Like there's still the realities. Some people go hardcore and like, no, I'd rather be homeless and still doing my thing. And if that's you, great, do that. But if you need to have you know, a house or an apartment or whatever it is, and that may mean you have to take on a job, but just don't stop doing your thing. Because otherwise the regret will eat you up. Because you'll be 100 and looking back and say, man, I, I could have done more. I could have done it. But I just went to go work for the man forever, and you end up hating your life. So taking a step back is OK, but just don't go, go to zero. As long as you love it. As long as you love it, you have to find a way to keep going. And as soon as you stop loving it, at least for me, I'm out. Like if I stopped liking making top 10 videos, I would stop. Forget y'all, I'm out, <laughs> right? Like I love you, but I'm, I'm out, right? And I'll go do something else. Because you can't create great things from a place of, of being forced to do it. And it happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. You end up buying yourself a job. Something worked, you liked it, it was great, and then you evolved, but your business didn't evolve because what was successful for you is now the chains for you to move forward. And you keep end up doing that same thing that you hate. And now you've grown up here. 
And there's this huge disconnect, and you're unhappy. You should quit sooner on those things and go off and chase that dream or evolve your business. My business is always a reflection of me. Before my YouTube channel, I had a website. You guys probably aren't OG enough for my website <laughs> stuff, but I had a website. I had, I had 100,000 pages on my website. I had 5,000 people writing from my website. And I turned it off overnight and said, I'm done with this. Turned off revenue. Had eight people on my team, moved them all over to YouTube. And I'm going to do this now. Because it was starting to drain me. And as soon as you feel that, you have to evolve it or move on. That's what I wanted to ask you about is like when you just go full fledged into your passion, what you're actually going to like make your life about. That's a personality thing. Like, how do you quit smoking? Do you just quit or do you go Nicorette? There's options, right? I think for me, I would much rather have uh, a, a side hustle with my job. So yeah, that's something that I feel like I've gone back and forth with. Yeah. At times it's like, hey, do I you know, just get businesses that I don't necessarily have a big passion for, but just the cash flow? And then how much are you just gonna go like right all into your one big thing? Because I, I feel like, you know, as an entrepreneur, I've heard of people having 15 streams of income just because they want to get rich. Uh, like Ty Lopez, people like this. Multiple streams of income will not get you rich. It's not the fastest way. Pick one and kick ass at that thing. Yeah, if he tries to go from singing to then snowboarding and videoing and whatever, he'll, learn, he'll earn a lot of little dollars, but he'll never get rich. Even now, my Instagram, I'm just getting into Instagram. People try to do everything. So you're, you're on all the social networks and then you suck on all of them. And you're just posting everywhere, but it's not quality. And then you wonder why you don't get results. Because you're trying to do 20 things at the same time, so you're going to suck. So. For, like for social, I would say have an account on each and just listen. So if somebody tweets you, you can respond to them and say thank you and acknowledge them, but you're not posting hardcore on Twitter because you're focused on Instagram. And then go crush Instagram and then build a team under you for Instagram, and then you can go and do the next thing. The people who win get amazing at one thing, and they dominate. And then you can look at expanding to other things. So I wouldn't be thinking 15 streams of income. Well, that's my, that's my uh, not that you do them all at once, but like obviously you're building one at a time. Like, but then you have to be done with one. Like I want to push, I see, I see these things as windows, and the window's going to close. Why do I do three videos a day on YouTube? Because right now, my skill set with where YouTube is at and my passion, like it's this magical thing that is amazing. Yeah. And so I need to push as hard as I can before it ends. Because it's going to end. Because that window's going to close. Right? So in five years, YouTube won't be the, th the same anymore. There's going to be something new that pops up. Now, the skills I develop can be brought to those other platforms. The reason why I can crush on Instagram is because of the 10 years on YouTube. It's 80% it's the same thing. There's just minor hacks and things that you have to figure out. But it's 80% the same thing so of creating content. Really, you don't like dabble in real estate. You don't dabble in no. Oh my god, no. 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 See, this is actually, this is good because this is like, I think the one gold nugget that I've, that I've needed at, I'm 22 at my age, there's just so much. It's like, you can do real estate. If I look at this crypto ICO, uh, look at, you know, you can build a drop shipping store over here and then you can do this. So it's like. But, it, but, but what is it tied to? Those are all just business models. There's lots of business models. What is it tied to? What are you trying to accomplish? What's your passion? What's your purpose? Okay. Right? And then there's, then you can figure out what the best how is going to be. But just doing a business because, just doing a podcast because 2019 is the year of podcasts, you're going to lose. You can try it. You should taste it. You should try doing a podcast and try doing a YouTube channel. But sticking with it just because you think it's a good idea and a good strategy, you're going to lose. You have to become the best podcaster. And you can. And you can win. And you can crush it. But to try to do podcasting and then do your own ICO on the side and then drop shipping and then garage sale flipping and all that stuff, right? Like, Yeah, I saw so some dude on Facebook. He's like, check out my course on how to develop four streams of income at once. I'm like, how do you even mentally do that? Like, I, like I, the more I focus on, the more I want to crawl, curl up into a ball. There's, listen, understand that most of these people are just fronting. The number of guys that I work with, I, I see it on YouTube because, you know, it's, it's my space. There's tons of guys who are buying a whole bunch of fake stuff. On Instagram, it's even worse. 
the number of guys who are ahead of me on YouTube, uh, on Instagram, that, are, that I'm chasing down, the number of fake followers they have is insane. And I'm getting hit up every day with, hey, 60 bucks for a shout out and we're gonna get you, you know, 1,000 new followers. Like, you guys don't understand. I love the process. I wanna chase these guys down. And if I don't know what's real and what's fake, I'm gonna hate myself. <laughs> I love that they're cheating and I'm not. It's the best. Legit, like I love the climb so much. And the amount of hate, not hate, but amount of like laughs that I got when, when I started, when I said I'm gonna take Instagram more seriously, and I had 6,000 followers, and I got like 1.5 million on YouTube, it's like, well this guy sucks, what are you doing? I loved it. And then we go from six to seven, to 10, to 20, to 40, to 100, right? I love the climb. I love that there's so many people ahead of me. Like YouTube, when Gary slowed down, now Gary's ahead of me on sub, but behind on views, I'm pumped again. Like I love having the, I love having the competition. When he slowed down on, on Christmas and on, on uh, holidays, like uh, summer and Christmas, he always slows down. And it pisses me off. Because his team takes over and they're not as good. Right? So I, I, had a, I had a mental race with him to a million subscribers who would get there first. And like, oh man, you know, Gary's going to take winter off and August off and I'm pissed. Because he was ahead of me. But then he'd slow down, so I passed him. But it wasn't a race. It's like when it's easy, it's not, you don't feel good. I wanted him at his best, even if I lost, right? So now he's ahead, like I'm pumped again. It's great, let's go chase him down. Yeah. So that actually, that helps a lot, man. Like, just to know that you should just barrel into one thing. And not... Once you find it, though, right? Like, go taste it, taste it, try, try drop shipping. Yeah. try ICO, whatever, yeah. right? And just see, like, do I want to go back to it? But when you find it, then blinders, right? Like, I won because I did three videos a day for five years on YouTube, right? Just focus. <coughs> Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, awesome, whatever, great. It's going to be the future, right? It's happening, but there's lots that's going to be the future. Everything is the future, great. But so is, so is YouTube, so is videos, right? And at some point, it'll be Evan in like VR coming at you or hollow lenses or whatever, right? But this is, the, this is what I like playing in. I, don't, I hate real estate. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm anti-real estate. For me, personally, I, I think I get a way higher ROI on myself than invested in real estate. That's fine. I love that you love real estate. It's amazing. Go crush it in real estate. But if it's just a strategy, you're, you're going to get destroyed. Just to make money, you're going to get destroyed. Because people who love it, people who love it will eat you for lunch. Come in on YouTube against me. I'll destroy you, right? But, but like, that's how it is. Real estate is the same thing in any field. That's why you have to love it so much to find your niche because the people who are great at it and they love it will destroy you. Okay, I'm right to teach because, like, I don't want to do real estate. I start, I need money. I need money, like, so I have a lot of, I have nine different exercises that I do. But my, everything is to build money for my nonprofit. And, you know, about the kids, but it's for children. They know, I'm from Gary, Indiana, and it's, you know, the Jacksons are from there, and everybody loves the Jacksons, but I hate them because they're sellouts. They never came back and did anything, like, for anything, anything, nothing. We don't even have public schools anymore. So, like, I need money for that, you know? I, like, Great. I'm from the ghetto. Don't nobody want to help nobody in the ghetto. They help. The and I love that you're here. This is great. In their but listen, making but, so, money is about, making money is about providing value. Like, yeah. You like, figure I out. I mean, I know I probably get crushed in real estate. That's not my goal, but I want. I want so to have what's a your goal? Store. I have an ice cream truck. I have a vending machine. Like, and they're all probably just doing okay. And I want them to do that. Like, but so should I just stop and focus on what you can bring insane value to? Making money is a function of providing value. The more value you can bring to somebody, the more money you're going to make. If you're always dabbling and trying different things, you never get great at providing value. So you'll have these little things that give you tiny pockets of money and then you feel like you never have enough and at the end of the week, where'd all that money go? I love that you're doing a nonprofit. So making money is about providing value, right? Oh, yes. So, so real estate is just a business model, just like network marketing, just like anything, it's just a business model. But if you don't love it enough to get great at it, you'll never learn how to provide amazing value. I'm not doing it to love it. I just, I just don't have the, I, I'm doing it for the non -profit. Like I wanna be like the boys and the girls club on a million. That's like my goal for my nonprofit. Great. You know, to teach kids to do Nonprofit is great. You need to learn how to make money first. Okay. 
right? And it doesn't mean that you wait till you're a millionaire before you give back. I love giving back as we go, 100%, but you have to learn how to make money in part of the process. So, so as an example, when I do in the tour, we always give away a, a seat to somebody who can't afford to have the seat, because that was me. We're like, I couldn't be able to afford to come to this when I was first starting out. Now we never say, oh, you're, you know, this is the person who got the free ticket, right? But that's part of the contribution is always, I always do something that's free to help out and give back. But it's, the more that you grow a business, the more you can contribute back. So many people who want to give back and have a heart, and I'm like, I feel you 100%. But if you're only doing that and you're not growing a business, you're not, you're not going to be able to create anything that's really lasting. You're just volunteering your time. So you build a business, and in the process of doing that, have a portion, 10%, 20%, whatever you want, that gives back to help in your community. Don't be the sellout. Great. I love it. Contribute back. But what are you going to build in, in the process as a profitable business that's growing? Because if you have 20 people working for you and you're making lots of money, the amount of good that you can do is amazing. But having eight side hustles in real estate while taking care of all the kids, five kids, and like jobs, and everything is just going to be bringing in little bits. We have to figure out where can you put your passion against it that's going to provide, like any of them could work. The ice cream truck could be a million dollar business. The candy store could be a million dollar plus business, just that. That's not what I want to do. Great, of course not. So you got to find that thing, right? But you're so busy doing all the stuff that you don't like, you haven't even found, spent time to find the thing that you do. So if I'm you, I would even rather get a job that I don't even have to put that much work into just to pay the bills. And then, and then your extra time you're spending on actually finding the thing that you want to do. That all started from my, I hate real estate. But I, I, I love, I mean, <laughs> real estate is great. It's just not for me. So I hate real estate for me. I don't think it's the best investment model for me but it's amazing and lots of people made tons of money off real estate. So making these events happen is not a solo effort and I want to give a quick shout out to some of the people who helped promote this event. If you guys like this video and you wanna see what I'm doing next in St. Louis, go check out the video right next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.